Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to Tool Review Day. And we're looking at our second at the of the gallery airbrushes, and this time we're looking at their top of the range. So um, this is their premium airbrush, uh, the Mobius. Um, they do it in two versions, um, a 0.2 and a 0.3, which refers to um, the needle size. Um, I, I guess, I don't know this for sure, um, something I need to check, I guess if you buy this one with a 0.3, um, you can then always buy a 0.2 needle to add into it. You can certainly buy them separately. So uh, the reason why I've got the 0.3 is because um, when you think about airbrushing for modelers, um, generally the range of uh, airbrush needles that you're likely to want to have is somewhere between um, a 0.2 and a 0.5. So the 0.3 is a really good uh, middle range, covers all the bases um, needle. And, and I usually say to people, if they're going out buying their first airbrush, a 0.3 needle is probably the way to go for your first airbrush. Um, now, this, like I say, is the premium um, range airbrush. Um, so do stay tuned to the end of the video when we talk about cost um, and I summarize because um, I've, I've got some things to say. So even if you're a first time uh, buyer uh, of an airbrush, this might be of interest to you. Anyway, right, this airbrush for me is really aimed at people who have been uh, got used to airbrushing, um, know what they're doing, and are looking for either a better quality airbrush or an additional airbrush. Um, and it's very much aimed at competing with the likes of the um, Infinity, um, which is uh, a widely used um, brand, or um, or maybe an Eclipse from a water, or what have you. So I will, from time to time during this video, compare this. This is the best airbrush I have ever owned um, for all sorts of reasons, and we'll compare the Mobius to this as we go through the video. But first of all, let's look at what we get in the box. So this was delivered to me like this, came in um, a card uh, wrapped in cellophane uh, and in a cardboard, corrugated cardboard uh, shipper. Um, and they came in a, a relatively flimsy bag, but as you can see, the cardboard shipper did everything uh, it was supposed to, and I've got a perfectly protected box here. Uh, on the top, we've got the brand there, um, uh, Gallery, which if you're not familiar with them, they're um, a Chinese company who are basically taking the best of all the innovation of airbrushes from different companies over the years and applying some of their innovation and coming up with some really fantastic products that are starting to turn heads um, in not just the modeling community, to be honest. Um, it tells us on the side that we've got a premium series brush and that it's a dual action airbrush. So dual action means um, the trigger will go, um, you can pull it back as well as press it down. Um, then on the sides, we've got the branding um, and then on the back of the box here, uh, we've got uh, an image of part of the airbrush um, and gives us contact details, um, but it says we've got a unique tangent micro air channel nozzle, which we will talk about um, in a minute, um, for superior low pressure atomization, I'll explain all that, uh, a mirror level removable cup for effortless cleaning, uh, lightweight and ergonomic design, and a main lever with adjustable tension. So, Let's have a look what we actually get in the box. So when we take the lid off, first thing I want to say is the box is really sturdy. Um, so you can keep your airbrush in this long term. It's a, it's a good sturdy box. Uh, another reason to keep hold of the box is the full breakdown of the airbrush, a full strip down, which you never really need to do it to this level, but it does show you all the components um, uh, and where everything is. So if you're not going to keep the box, do take a photograph of that because it's a really great reference. So that's giving us an idea of, of the breakdown of our um, airbrush. Then we've got um, a little note, dear customer, 
Um, it tells us that the airbrush is tested before it leaves and therefore there might be some paint in there. Um, so um, simply clean it and, and what have you. And it also says, and this I think is excellent, if you find an actual issue with the product, there is no need to return it. Simply contact us to confirm the problem and we will ar arrange for a reshipment. So if you've got a fault with something in the airbrush, they will give you another one. That's how confident they are that your product is going to be perfect. They do, like I say, they do test them all before they leave the factory. Uh, and then on the back, we've got some uh, social media connections there. Um, I can certainly recommend joining their YouTube channel because they talk about how to resolve certain issues. Not that they have issues with this brush, but issues that everyone comes across when airbrushing, like getting bubbles in the paint and... Uh, needle that won't move and that sort of stuff it's really really uh worth catching up with them on there so <clears throat> you get that then you get a quick start guide which you um uh, and it, it's really nice so if you saw the um other review that we did of the uh entry level airbrush it's exactly the same thing but it is um modified for this different airbrush and talks about some of the different features but effectively it's the same thing in uh, multiple languages um, it does have um, a nice little one here i'm going to point out um, number eight shows you the lubrication points which is really really handy so two lubrication points one of which is on the needle uh, interesting so that's good. So we've got that. Then we've got a little bit of protective uh, sponge. And then we've got our airbrush, which um, first thing we spot is we've got two sets of replacement seals. So um, that's a real advantage. You don't have to um, replace your seals very often, but they do over time either compress or um, start to go brittle so you've got replacements there and that's brilliant because it means if you do have a fault you can quickly swap out and you've got no downtime and then you can back order a replacement spare set so massively uh, impresses me that you get that because nobody else does it um, and that's a fantastic feature we've also got a little tube of uh, uh, lubrication um, i've not checked but i guess um you can you can buy this separately on there i know you can buy things like um uh, compressors and spray booths and cleaning kits um and then you can buy spare nozzles and needles and bits and pieces like that I'm not sure if you can buy lubrication so i'll have to have a look at that in fact i'll go and have a look at that now and then i can let you know so they don't appear to sell the lubrication but you can um, get it from uh, all sorts of different um, airbrush suppliers but you've got one there that's going to last you for ages that because you only need a tiny tiny amount and it's got this nice little cutout here where we can keep it in um, and then we've got our airbrush and then we've got our paint cup and the first thing that strikes you is the length of this it looks really long doesn't it and it is it is longer than uh, a standard airbrush and i'll just show you now if we uh if i just take the paint cup off this so if i compare it to the uh, hadron steam back and we put the you can see it it depends on how extended you've got the uh, locking nut at the back in, in fairness but with the trigger and the paint cup openings in the same place you can see that actually it is a longer airbrush, but there's not much in it. Um, the sleek design of it is a bit deceiving, um, and that's because we've got an extended nozzle here, and we'll talk, we'll talk about that. So, yeah. Right, so the next thing is, how heavy is it? So one of the statements on the box is that it, it's lightweight, and it's certainly a lot lighter than the entry-level brush that we reviewed um, not so long ago. Um, so that's what 97 grams and if we compare that to and then that's 76 grams so it's still heavier um but i've got to say um put them in my hands i don't really feel a lot of difference um so yeah 
what I'd say is it's in the ballpark for a, pr a premium level airbrush. So other than the airbrush, we get one paint cup uh, in the box. And when I take the lid off and show you the inside of that, it is highly, highly polished. Now the importance of that is, I mean, it is as smooth as glass. Um, the importance of that is it makes it a lot easier for cleaning out. So yeah, it's got a really smooth surface. And if I compare that to um, my Hadder and Steinbach cup, it's a lot smoother. That is a better cup than the Hadder and Steinbach. It's a lot smoother. Now, when you compare the size, there's not much in them. And if you remember when we were talking about the entry level one, I, I like the fact that the cups had a flat size side because they were easy to clean. Well, this one has that sort of fluted where it, it's starting to come in. And, and that helps with um, retaining the paint and not getting paint spills, but it does make it a little bit uh, more difficult to clean. But actually, because this is a big wide cup, it doesn't really make that much difference. What it When it really makes a difference is when you've got these small cups like this. Um, so yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, one thing I'm interested in is do the paint cups from my other uh, gallery airbrush fit on that? Let's have a try. So just out of interest, I want to see if we've got a standard uh, thread fitting. And it would appear that we do. So it's interchangeable with the paint cups that I've got on my other gallery uh, airbrush. So that's fantastic news. Now these ones don't have a mirror finish, but you wouldn't expect that on an, uh, an entry level um, uh, brush. So these cups will need a little bit more effort in cleaning. But that being said, I now know I can use my really large one if if I want to, if I've got a big job on and, and need lots of paint or I'm doing a lot of weathering on a diorama or something. Now, the other thing I notice about the uh, paint cup is the quality, not just of the cup, but of the lid. When I compare that to the lids that came with the uh, entry level airbrush, there's a, a, a big, big difference um, in the quality. So you've not got a stamped out folded um, lid, which had a little bit of a dirt trap on the inside. This is seamless on the inside, so it'll be easy for cleaning. Um, and it's also got this high um, uh, plated finish, which allows you to uh, clean it easily. So I'm really impressed with the paint cup. Um, so yeah, let's just put that on and then you can get an impression of the uh, airbrush with its paint cup on. There we go you're ready to go. The thing that I find annoying about um, my uh, Infinity and, um, well, in fact, all my other paint cups is there is a tendency for the paint lids to fall off. And it ha happens all the time and it drives me up the wall. Whereas this has a really nice fit um, and it ain't coming off unless I want it to come off. So I like that as well. It means we've got some real precision engineering going on here. Um, so I love that about the brush. So we've got a paint cup that's got a better fit, better finish. So for me, that's market leading. Um, the paint cup on its own is uh, a, a real upgrade on my Infinity. But let's have a look at the brush itself. So um, it's come pre-fitted with um, a male quick fit um, line connector, which is fantastic because uh, usually you have to buy them separately. I mean, they're only pence, but it's just one less thing you've got to do. So um, that's really great. Um, and like I say, uh, it's pre-fitted. You don't even have to put it on. It's it's on in the box and usually you have to buy them separately. So uh, that's a really good feature. And then when we look at it, not only is it aesthetically quite a stunning airbrush, look at this little twist we've got here. Really nice. And that's been done partly for access, partly for aesthetics, and partly 
to help balance the the uh, airbrush so yeah i, I mean it, it looks really nice and then on this end here we've got the um air cap uh, the needle protector um, and it will allow you if you wish to to blow back into the airbrush um, which some people like to do for cleaning i'm not a fan of it i don't do it um, and uh, a number of brands of airbrush recommend you don't do it but actually gallery are not one of those um, so we've got this little uh, protection cap here um, and it comes off easy enough so if like me you prefer to paint without the uh, needle protector on uh, to avoid any spatter issues and things um, you can do that um, so yeah um, nice and easy I'm just going to put that back on for a sec um, we can also see we have a little cutout in the body of the uh, airbrush as well which is unusual and you can see the uh, needle self-centering um, element of the airbrush in there um, and that's handy if you decide that you need to remove that because if you look at the instructions in the box yeah you can see um, you can see that in the body there you've got all this mechanism including this needle guide here that's visible and that there's a little o-ring behind it so if you need to get in with a little screwdriver and and loosen that you can see what you're doing so that's really fancy um i, I really like that I, you shouldn't ever have to but just in case you ever do if you want to do a full strip down or replace the the, the seal in a few years time then then maybe um the um hand, the trigger is a wedge shape um, quite an extreme wedge shape actually but it's very comfortable it's very very comfortable now they're not the first people to have a, a wedge shape uh, this is a wedge shape as well but it's um, uh, not as extreme um, and I've always liked the trigger on this but it, it does have quite a bit of slack in it um, you can move it around and, and what have you um, but the, tra um, the, the travel's not so bad, but I do find that I get, my, I get some finger fatigue because there's quite a bit of resistance to this. It's quite stiff, um, and then but the pulling back action is okay. Whereas with this one, it's nice and light. In fact, the travel is, you don't have much travel in this at all. Um, and then you, you press down and it's really nice and light, and then you've got your tension and you can you can adjust the tension um, with this uh, chucking nut here um, and make it lighter so it's your personal preference if you want a bit of resistance you can if you want it a bit lighter you can um, and look at how much slack there is in this very very little so again a little bit more precision in the construction of this actually i i feel so yeah uh, it feels nice and natural and um yeah i don't have any problems with that um nice and light and does what i want and i'm not having to travel very far to get the air on um or to push back now uh, we have a stop on the end of this so it's a screw type which allows me to adjust how far back that trigger will go um, and I can take it all the way full back there now that's really nice so if you're doing a long job and you want a consistent spray it means that you don't um, uh, you don't accidentally have a, a finger spasm and put a big splurge of paint on um, so that's it's always nice when you've got one of these now this has one as well but I've never really fully fully worked it out it has numbers one to six and when you've got the number you want you press it in and that that locks it and then the needle won't go far enough back uh, and then you pull it out to unlock it and I can see it in there I can see that it's moved but I've never really worked out do I change this and then lock it or do I change the lock afterwards I think you change the lock afterwards because I, I can see it moving but it doesn't have a lot of travel but it does have these little numbers and you can line it up with the numbers and it feels like you've got something uh, you you've done something with a degree of accuracy whereas this one doesn't have any numbers but what it does do is it allows you to micro adjust so I don't think there's much in them um, and I think this is perhaps 
over-engineered, you'll pay for that. Um, I don't see the need for the the, the lock and what have you. Um, whereas this just micro adjusts and it's locked. You don't have to push it in or pull it out or anything like that. You just lock it. So I really like that. Um, it's, it's nice and easy to use. Um, yeah. So let's have a look at the, um, the cap here, the nozzle, because that's what's making this longer and there's something quite special about it. So I want to talk to you about the nozzle and we're going to take this apart and show you. There we go. So this is interesting. The reason why we have a longer nozzle of the uh, airbrush is because of this. Now, they call this a spiral shaped Mac nozzle. So what Mac basically means is it adjusts the volume of air going through the, the uh, brush um, regardless of the pressure that you've set on your compressor. Um, we've got this spiral shape, which they say is inspired by the um, the tangent function um, on the body here. So it follows that sort of shape there. We've got that little kink in. So this isn't a new innovation um, in itself, the Mac nozzle. There are other companies that do that bit at the end that you can see here, the straight lines. And we saw that on the entry level one. Uh, this um, little spiral here is the innovation that they've added. So what does that do? Well, what it does is it ensures that you get a uniform and stable airflow. Um, so you, uh, you've you got a constant flow of air um, and it's really, really good for doing fine lines and particularly fine lines at low pressure. So what that will allow you to do is drop your pressure, atomize, and have a constant flow. So if you're doing things like um, a Luftwaffe aircraft with those little patchy um, camouflage patterns or the little uh, wriggly lines that, that some aircraft have, this is absolutely giving you fine control of what's coming out of that nozzle. And I really, really love that. So you've got the paint flow going through the middle. You've got the air coming through the, the, the sides there. It's, it's, it's a lovely piece of work. And because they've made it longer, if I just slip that over the needle very carefully. There we go. Because they've made that longer, when you take your nozzle cap off, it's dead easy to get to it. No fishing around for it. It doesn't get... Um, stuck in there and you've got to fish it out which is uh, what you have to do with some airbrushes so i really love it it's a really nice feature and if i compare that to the um, nozzle that you get on the infinity you just you, you've got nothing there so you've got more control you've got a real upgrade um, compared to uh, the the infinity in my view so that is a really nice feature. Um, the cutout, yep, yeah, that's a, a, a nice feature also in the body here. It's also quite aesthetically pleasing as well. But if we take that off, um, you'll see that the basic function of the airbrush is no different to anybody else's. Um, and you can uh, adjust there the resistance you get. And yeah, really, really nice. So. Um, so this is the main lever adjustment knob, just so you're clear, and this is the chucking nut. So this locks that needle into place so that when you pull the trigger back, the, the needle's moving. And this one adjusts the resistance you get on your needle so that you can set it up the way you want. And I find generally that I only have to reset it if I've done a full strip on the, the airbrush. So uh, have a little bit of a play, get it. To where it's comfortable i quite like uh like it to be a bit softer so that i've uh, i've got a bit more control i don't like too much resistance so you just mess around that's on like full and then i can 
really slacken that off if I wish. Um, and again, that's no different to the leading brands, uh, which do exactly the same thing, where you can soften and, and tighten the uh, the needle, um, the, the trigger function as you wish. So no different, and they have a cutout and, and what have you. So, uh, yeah. So the big test is how easy is this to strip down? And I'm going to show you in a minute how to strip this down and put it back together, and we'll, we'll have a look at how easy it is to do that. Um, but I have a slight problem. And the problem is that the, this does not come with a wrench and you need one to take that apart. Now I went through all my other airbrush uh, wrenches and the reality is I don't have one that fits. So um, I have to take this apart with um, a pair of pliers and that concerns me a little bit. So one thing I would say is if you need a spanner to undo something on your airbrush you really should provide the spanner um, but that's my only uh, criticism that i've found so far so to strip this down um and i'm not i'm not doing the timed one as yet um, we have to take this off so i need to get a little tool to help me with that so let me reassemble the brush get a tool and then we'll see how long it takes to strip this down uh, before I before I do that, I must say that you have a similar issue here with the Infinity, but they give you a little um, lever that goes into those slots, which allows you to loosen it. So uh, that's something the Infinity does better. Okay, I have my airbrush fully assembled here, and I'm going to assume that we've finished a job and we need to fully strip it down, ready for cleaning. And what I want to do is just time that and see how quickly we can do that. So I'm ready to go with my timer. Um, we're gonna do um, a full strip down for cleaning. So we're not disassembling it like all its components, just what you need to do um, when you've uh, finished a cleaning job and you want to clean the whole airbrush, not just um, a paint change where you just flush it out, but a full strip down. So, Let's see how easy and how quickly we can strip this down. Uh, off we go. So we're gonna take the paint cup off first. Um, that just gives us better access um, to the airbrush. And then I'm gonna take the needle guard off, pull the trigger back so the needle's out of the way um, and it's safe. And then I'm taking my nozzle off, including the inner nozzle. Then we're going to take the back out, take the body off there, um, undo the needle chuck and I can now push my needle through so that I'm not dragging paint back through the airbrush and that's my uh, needle out um, and then I can take this part off. So this screws out. like so, which allows me to lift out the trigger. And now I need to get my pliers on here and just give it a gentle tweak. And it doesn't take much, but even when it's finger tight, um, I can't undo it otherwise. So that is me stripped. So, I don't actually need to undo this bit, um, to be honest. Um, so I'm not quite sure why I did, but you may you may have got paint in here, and I just wanted to show you um, that you can take that off. So that becomes a part in its own right. So you can strip all that down for cleaning if you need to. You shouldn't need to. Um, you can just take that off and keep the assembly together. Um, that is going to make it a lot quicker for um, reassembly. We talked about this in the uh, when we looked at the last one. Uh, this is on a little hinge here, so um, that means that we don't have to try and put it in with tweezers. 
Um, so this is the um, uh, needle chucking guide uh, and this little bit quite often can be a separate item. Um, I guess we can take this off if we want to, but there's no need to, so we'll we'll leave it like that. And now you've got the airbrush in a condition where you can flush it through with with water, with thinners, whatever, uh, and that's a full change. So I didn't notice how long that took. So one minute, 24 seconds. I could probably have done it um, quicker, whereas my stopwatch, we could probably have done it quicker if I'd not taken um, these two parts out. So... That means we are uh, now ready to reassemble. So let's just put that back in before we start off because don't really need to take that bit out to be honest. So we know it took one minute, 24 seconds to get this um, stripped. How quickly can we put it back together? Let's see. I'm gonna start by putting the uh, nozzle assembly uh, back together. Um, so we put that on first because all the bits and pieces can drop out if we, uh, we're not careful um, and put the uh, guard on as well. Okay, that's that on. Then we're going to put the trigger in, make sure it's facing the right way. Yep, that's in. Um, then we can put the chucking thing in and the spring goes on there. And then we can put this, this piece in which is the main lever adjustment knob and the spring case. And we put that in just finger tight. Now we can put our needle in and I can feel that is centering. And chucking lock nut and then our body paint cup and we're ready to go so one minute 30 seconds so you can strip it and rebuild it in three minutes brilliant right then so i really like this airbrush i have to say when i compare it to this i think we get better paint cup we get the innovation that gives us better atomization and, and control particularly of fine detail everything else is comparable you know um you've got the same uh, features you've got the same accessibility um, you've got the same uh, quality feel uh, there's a slight difference in weight but most people aren't going to notice that so in the end you've got a very comparable airbrush which this gives you a nudge of advantage over now the 2024 evolution cr plus will cost you somewhere between 175 to 200 dollars if you shop around um, so it's not a cheap bit of kit but this is even with all of that innovation and what have you it comes in at a recommended retail price of $75.99 but right now you can get 14% off so as I record this, which is uh, 27th of February, um, this particular airbrush is currently $64.99. That means you can get this airbrush and a compressor for the same price as you can buy that airbrush. And this one, I think, is probably slightly better. So there is a link. If you go underneath the video, uh, into the text of the video and open that up, um, you will see a link. If you go through that link, it will take you to the website uh, and you will be able to see the most recent offers um, and what's happening with all the various different airbrushes and accessories and things they can get. Um, they have special, uh, special offers on um, at the moment. 
but make sure you go through my link to ensure that you've got the latest version because um, you don't want to miss anything, do you? I think this is a great airbrush. I'm really, really uh, pleased with it, and I'm going to be doing a lot of playing around with this airbrush um, over the next few weeks with some uh, projects um, that I've got on the go. I'm also going to be doing some... Um, airbrushing tutorials taking you from complete novice never used an airbrush before how to buy an airbrush um, how to get the right airbrush for you the kit that you need and then take you from absolute beginner to competent which is where i view myself as being um, so uh, and this airbrush we'll be using uh, in some parts of that now if you've never bought an airbrush before and your money will extend to it and your budget will ex extend to it this is a great airbrush to start with so i know that we've looked at another one and talked about it being a good entry level it gives you two needles um, and multiple uh, cap sizes but if you're just a general modeler and you want to get to grips with a good brush that's going to give you some really nice opportunity to develop your skills and not have to then later upgrade this is a good option as well um, so it all depends on your budget um, this isn't in budget for everybody uh, but equally if you've got a cheaper airbrush and you're ready for an upgrade and you want something a bit more professional then you know the Mobius uh, 0.3 is definitely a brush to look at um, I think it's awesome I am deeply deeply impressed and I've used many airbrushes over the years so I'm looking forward to having um, some fun uh, painting various things with that I hope that was useful. Please look out in the future for my uh, airbrush tutorials where we'll be using um, both of my uh, gallery airbrushes uh, and putting them through their paces. Thanks for looking in. You enjoy your modelling and I will see you very soon. Bye for now. Hi and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button and if you haven't subscribed please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee. So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You'll find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.